want to talk from a subject on this afternoon. I want to be like my daddy. I want to be like my daddy. I want to be like my daddy is a saying that at one time or another a child and especially a little boy makes in his life as he is growing up and he sees how his dad is handling business, taking care of the home, working hard and loving the apple of his eye and spending time with the family and having fun. I want to be like my daddy is a statement that expresses the child's deep desire to duplicate or be a carbon copy of their father and when others see the child's demeanor when others see the child is imitating their dad they'll say he's a chip off the old block or they'll say he's just like his daddy and on this afternoon I I just want to know is there anybody that wanted to be like that daddy or even their mother to be politically correct in these days uh, when they were growing up Uh, did you want to put on their clothes and dress up like they did did you ever act like them when they weren't around did you ever repeat what they said in the mirror when you were by yourself did you ever imitate them to others well not only did we want to be like our parents when we were growing up but after we came into the knowledge of Jesus Christ and repented of our sins and accepted him as our Lord and our Savior and you and I became children of the living God there was a shift uh, in wanting to be like our earthly parents uh, to wanting to be like our heavenly father because we came to find out that after the heartaches uh, after the struggles uh, after the test that's in this life in order to make it uh, in here uh, what we have to do Uh, is be like God Uh, and right now I know somebody is thinking and they're saying in their mind Pastor Clark how in the world can we be like God we cannot be like God Uh, and you're right in the sense of being omnipresent Uh, for you and I can't be at two places uh, at the same time Uh, but God is here uh, in Reesville North Carolina uh, and he's watching over us and God is also uh, at the same time in Afghanistan uh, watching over the troops as they are in the midst of the war and at the same time uh, God is hovering over the White House leading and guiding our president you're right Uh, we can't be like God in the sense of being omniscient uh, meaning we have all knowledge about everything that has and has come and shall be uh, even though some folk think that they do Uh, and you're right uh, we can't be like God uh, being omnipotent uh, having unlimited authority uh, and power uh, able to control every situation uh, and circumstance at will but we can be like God and we are like him according to the Bible because the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 the Bible says God said let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and I want to pause right here and show you something. I I want you to take notice uh, of who said it. Uh, The Bible says that God said uh, and if God said it, uh, that means he had already thought about what he wanted to do. Uh, God said uh, meaning he had a plan for you uh, and for me ever before uh, we entered this world. Uh, And that plan was revealed uh, in verse 26. Uh, God said let us uh, make man in our image. Uh, Allow me to take you a little deeper uh, with that first part of that verse uh, and share with you Uh, when God said let us uh, make man in our image uh, and after our likeness uh, he wasn't just talking to himself uh, but God had a conference call uh, and Jesus came on the scene uh, and the Holy Ghost showed up too Uh, he said let us uh, indicating uh, that he wasn't by himself Uh, let us uh, means uh, that there's more than one Uh, he said let us uh, make man Uh, now the word make means to fashion produce prepare and to bring about he said let us fashion man in our image what does this this our image mean my brothers and sisters who is that 
hour uh, and what is that image uh, the hour is the sun uh, the hour is God himself and the hour is the Holy Spirit stay with me uh, and I want to show you something else well what is the image of God uh, Pastor Clark since we cannot see him uh, well John the fourth chapter uh, verse 24 uh, the Bible says that God is a what spirit uh, and they that worship him uh, must worship him in spirit uh, and in truth well well how does a spirit uh, have an image uh, well Miriam and Webster's dictionary uh, tells us that an image uh, is an imitation or a reproduction in solid form uh, if you and I are a reproduction of God uh, made in solid form uh, then where did he get this image from uh, well there's another word uh, that I want to toss out there uh, that will pull this thing together uh, and it's called imagination uh, now imagination uh, is the act of power uh, of forming a mental image uh, of something uh, not present uh, to the senses uh, or never wholly uh, perceived in reality. Uh, and what I want to tell you uh, on this afternoon uh, is that you and I were always uh, in the mind of God. Uh, God thought of you uh, and imagined uh, what it would be like uh, to have somebody like you uh, and have somebody like me uh, praise uh, his holy name. Uh, God thought of uh, each one of us, uh, how it would please him uh, to bring us into existence uh, and equip us with a set of gifts, uh, a set of talents, uh, a particular personality uh, and certain features uh, that would show forth uh, his glory. Uh, and if there is somebody in here on this afternoon uh, that's been unsure uh, or uncertain of why you were placed here, uh, if there is someone that wasn't feeling loved uh, and that's been feeling unappreciated, uh, just know uh, that you are always uh, on God's mind uh, and in his plan uh, from the foundations uh, of the world. My brothers and sisters, God created you after his image, which was his imagination. And God's imagination was, is, and will ever be perfect. God's image is so awesome and it's extraordinary. And that's why David, the writer of Psalms 139, put his feathered pen to the parchment in verses 13 and through 17 and broke out with a prophetic poetry praise announcement when he realized how much God loved him. And he said, for thou, God, has possessed my reins. Thou has covered me, oh my God, in my mother's womb. I will, because you've done that right there, God. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God, I got to tell you, marvelous are your works. And my soul knoweth it white rail or greatly. My substance, everything that you put in me, God, everything that you placed in me, God, was not hid from you. When I was made, oh my God, in secret uh, and curiously wrought uh, in the lower parts of the earth, uh, your eyes uh, did see my substance, uh, yet being unperfect, uh, or in other words, incomplete. Uh, and in your book, God, uh, all my members uh, were written, uh, which a continuous were fashioned, uh, when as yet there was none of them. Uh, God, I just got to tell you uh, how precious uh, also are the thoughts unto me, oh God. Uh, how great uh, is the sum or the totality uh, of them. Uh, God, uh, people of God, uh, is very interested uh, in you. Uh, God loves you so much uh, that if you could count the ways, uh, it would blow your mind. Uh, God goes on to tell us uh, that not only has he made us in their image uh, and after their likeness, uh, he told them since he wanted them uh, to be like him, uh, he wants them to have uh, dominion over the fish of the sea, uh, over the fowls of the air, uh, over the cattle, uh, and over every creeping thing uh, that creepeth upon the earth. Uh, when what God was telling them, saints of God, uh, what God has given us uh, is the dominion, uh, which is the capacity to rule with uh, and like God, uh, to have the ability uh, to be stewards uh, over God's creation uh, that he created uh, before he placed man uh, in the earth. Uh, my dearly beloved of the cross, uh, God has given us the power uh, to rule with him uh, as his workers uh, in his vineyards. Uh, and all I'm trying to tell you uh, is that it's more to us uh, than just coming in the church. Uh, we have much work to do uh, in this earthly realm. Uh, not only are we to proclaim uh, the good news, uh, but we are to take care uh, and keep this world and everything in it beautiful uh, and subject to God's standards. Uh, I know somebody right now uh, is pondering in their mind and saying, what in the world uh, did we invite Pastor Clark here for? Uh, we invited him here uh, for an usher's anniversary. Uh, and what in the world, Pastor Clark, does all of this have uh, to do with ushering? Uh, well, I'm glad you asked and I saw 
result it from God. It has everything to do with it because the word usher means to cause to enter, usher to introduce, usher to proceed as a forerunner, usher to conduct to a place. And who would be the best teacher, an example for us to follow than God himself? For it was God who was the forerunner of the world and he calls light to